So hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Hyundai has recently released more details about the upcoming all new 2024 Hyundai Kona. And in this video, I wanna give you all of the feature differences between the N-Line as well as the Limited, including the pricing information, and just show you what each trim level will get you for the money and some of the key differences, because hint, there's quite a bit of difference. Now, before we get into the feature and option differences, I first wanna run through the key dimensions of over that of the previous generation, which I have sitting here beside me, because the Kona did grow in size quite a bit. So quickly running down the dimensions, the length is about 5.7 inches longer, the width is about one inch wider. In terms of height, it's about half to 0.6 inches taller. Uh, the all-wheel drive versions are going to be a little bit taller than that of the front-wheel drives. The wheelbase has grown 2.3 inches in size, and the interior dimensions are basically the same, marginally larger all around, uh, but the rear seat room in specific is three inches larger than this generation right here, which is quite significant, makes the rear seat and just the back seat space um, just a little bit more usable in my opinion. And the overall passenger and cargo volume is up as well significantly in the trunk space behind the second row seats. And even with the second row folded down, you're gonna have a ton more cargo and passenger area inside of the next generation Kona uh, versus this generation right here. So next, in terms of the powertrain, even though the next-gen Kona was designed around an electric architecture, meaning that it was primarily designed to be an EV, Hyundai has retrofitted it with not only the internal combustion engines, but also a hybrid variant, which we will not be getting here in North America, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we'll be getting two ICE powertrains as well as the Kona EV. Um, in terms of the powertrains, both of them are going to be a carryover from this generation. So we have the two-liter four-cylinder naturally aspirated, as well as the 1.6-liter turbo. Now, what's important about the turbo charge engine is that is now paired to an eight speed torque converted automatic versus out of the seven speed dual clutch in this generation. So I think that should make drivability uh, just all around better with the turbo engine option. I'm sure that's some feedback that Hyundai has gotten from time. And uh, the Seltos, the Kia version kind of on the same platform is also getting the eight speed torque converted automatic for the next generation, or I should say the mid cycle refresh for that vehicle. But anyways, um, front wheel drive and all wheel drive is so, still gonna be offered in this next generation as well. So now that we have those items out of the way, let's get into the feature and packaging differences between the two. There's a lot of nice standard equipment on this next generation Kona, um, which is a huge improvement over this generation right here, even though this was still a very nice vehicle and still is quite well equipped for the price point. Um, I think the next generation Kona specifically in its lesser trim levels are even more equipped than this model right here. And so standard equipment across both the N-Line as well as the Limited are gonna be things like LED projector headlights, the Hyundai Safety Sense with Smart Cruise Control, Highway Drive Assist 1, Lane Follow Assist, all of that stuff that Hyundai has to offer. Uh, you're gonna get both the 12.3 inch digital cluster as well as a 12.3 inch navigation system with dynamic voice recognition. You're gonna get the eight speaker premium Bose audio, Hyundai Digital Key 2.0, which does support Apple devices um, such as your Apple Watch, your iPhone, stuff like that, as well as the Android variants as well. Over there, software updates, Blue Link, Wi-Fi hotspot, dual zone automatic climate control, rear AC vents, wireless device charging, and the list goes on. So there is a ton of standard equipment across both the N-Line as well as the Limited. And uh, really, like I said, they are very well equipped. So now that we have those feature covers, now I wanna go into the Limited, tell you what you're gaining going to the Limited over that of the N-Line because the list is quite significant given the fairly small price difference between the two. So the Limited is gonna give you the full LED front and rear turn signals. I believe this is like the first time that Hyundai has done a full LED lighting setup on a, a vehicle in the compact class class or a subcompact class. So that is great to see. You're gonna get the LED full line daytime running light that they showed in a lot of their press images that they have released so far. So that is a cool addition as well. It'll be interesting to see what the lesser trims have given that they won't have the full line day daytime running light, but they will still have LED daytime running lights. So uh, that will be interesting to see some of those lesser trims. You're gonna get the hands-free smart lift gate with auto open, the HTEX leatherette seating surfaces, ventilated front seats, the surround view monitor system that also gives you the blind spot view monitor in the cluster, heated steering wheel, remote smart park assist, the garage home link on the auto dimming interior rear view mirror, ambient LED lighting with user selectable color above the glove box and the front door lower storage, 
park distance warning, reverse side and front with contour warning. I believe this is very similar to that found on the Ionic 6 Limited as well, where it gives you the side sensors and the park distance around the entire um, exterior of the vehicle versus that of just the front and rear. So those are all the things that you're gonna gain going to the top limited. Like I said, this is quite impressive. Ventilated front seats on a Kona is I believe a first here in the United States, but uh, great to see in this class of vehicle. But outside of this, there's definitely gonna be some cosmetic and appearance differences between the two, given the end line is the more sporty dynamic where the limited is just kind of be a premium trim with the fully loaded feature set. So the end line is gonna give you the unique end line exterior, including the bumper, grill design, moldings, emblems, and seat coverings. You're gonna get body color trim on the exterior that matches the paint itself instead of the darker gray or black accent. Twin tip exhaust, the end line exclusive sport seats with the Alcantara um, accents in the middle. So that will be very cool to see. You'll have a ton of red accents on the interior as well. And the leather wrap steering wheel with the end line details um, is what Hyundai has provided for all of the key differences. But it will be interesting to see these two trims in person. Uh, but overall, just know that the end line is gonna be the more sporty appearance both inside and out. So next, moving on to the exterior colors available because there are some big differences here. The end line is gonna be available in black, white, Ecotronic Gray, which is this color right here, Ultimate Red, as well as a new Denim Blue Pearl exterior. Now it is important to note the white, the gray, and the red is gonna be available with a two-tone black roof option. So you're gonna be able to get it in full body color as well as a black roof option for those three colors. And the black as well as the denim blue pearl are just gonna be one solid color on the outside. Uh, but those are all of the exterior colors available for the end line. Now moving on to the limited, it's gonna be available in the full color suite for the new Kona lineup. So this is gonna be black, white, Ecotronic Gray, Ultimate Red, Denim Blue Pearl, Soltronic Orange Pearl, Neoteric Yellow, Mirage Green, as well as the Denim Blue Pearl on the Limited. So great to see that there are some fun, exciting colors for the next generation Kona, uh, because I think this vehicle is one that Hyundai has highlighted in the past to keep all the fun colors on the exterior. So glad to see that is continuing for 2024, and uh, maybe they should roll out some of those exterior colors to some of the other Hyundai models as well. Now, finally wrapping up this video with the pricing difference between these two trims, uh, because the pricing did go up across the board no matter which trim you choose, uh, but the end line as well as the limited did see the most price increase for the next generation Kona. So the end line, including all wheel drive is gonna start at $33,485, including destination. And the limited is gonna be just $1,000 more at $34,485, including destination. Now, if you don't want all wheel drive, those prices did include all wheel drive, then you will subtract $1,500 from those. So basically it'll be in the low $30,000 price point, including destination for front wheel drive in both of these two trims. But um, as you can see, just a thousand dollar price difference between them. I would say the limited definitely offers a solid value and a lot of bang for the buck. Um, given the extra features over that of the end line for just a little bit more money. Now, in terms of the price increase over the prior generation Kona for both the end line as well as the limited, this is gonna represent a $2,800 price increase for the end line and a $2,700 price increase for the limited um, over that of this generation right here. So that is a fairly hefty price increase, not quite 10% in terms of the um, overall percentage of increase, but uh, that is worth noting. And, uh, but again, I do think you're gonna get a much better value with this next generation Kona, given the larger exterior interior size, uh, the more advanced safety systems available as well as just the overall comfort and convenience feature set uh, that you will find that typically was reserved for higher class vehicles such as those of the Tucson, Santa Fe, Palisade, and other uh, Hyundai SUVs. So great to see that they are rolling out these more advanced features across the board in this subcompact space and should make it very class competitive. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video on the 2024 Hyundai Kona N-Line versus the Limited. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel and these videos. Subscribe if you guys are not already subscribed. And just like I said, make sure to check out and keep an eye out for additional content coming once the 2024 Kona start hitting dealership lots later this summer into early fall. I believe we are only four to six weeks out from seeing the first 2024 Konas um, arriving at your local dealership. So if you're interested in this vehicle, make sure to get with them as soon as possible, see what their allocations are, and uh, just see if they have one that's coming in in the desired spec that you're looking for. Um, I really do like the limited trim, I have to say, for under $35,000. Um, you're getting a heck of a lot of vehicle, and given the overall size, like I said, this should make it more usable for the typical family, maybe one child. Not sure I would recommend it if you have two or more children, but I think you can definitely get away with it um, if you have one child. Uh, so the interior space with the three 
three inches of more rear legroom, as well as a little bit more headroom as well. Should make fitting a car seat back there just a little bit easier than this generation right here, where it was fairly tight overall. But nonetheless, make sure you guys subscribe, check out some other content I have here on the channel. And as always, I appreciate the support. Hope to see you guys in the next one.